What's going on, everybody? Welcome and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, season 12 trailer that has just been released a few days ago. And, um, yeah, the girls got it going on. They're back to their same old riggery, trickery, foolishness, and philandering. So, let's get into it. Trying to learn from my lessons, but do I get it yet? I want to set an example, but I'm not sure I didn't handle All my demons, I'm thinking that I should court a vet I fight for all respect I'm working overtime to keep up my head I understand I'll get the love when I'm dead So my focus is red Choose the black, I'd almost keep it me chosen I've been the token, now the back is ahead On my sofa, I chuck it What's going on, everybody? Welcome and welcome back to the channel. This is Georgia Carolina, your gated and discrimination-free community where we personalize culture and entertainment and then curate a conversation that's based on self-discovery and growth. I am your pop culture coordinator of all things inclusion and awareness, Jordan Renee. And I'm happy to have you back for another video. All right, you guys. So today we're talking about season 12, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. The trailer has just dropped and... Does anybody else think that the way that they framed this kind of looks like the hills a little bit? Like, if anybody remembers the original hills and remembers, like, even the new beginnings, when the new beginnings first came out, the way that they did the promo for that with the ominous uh, remake of um, Feel the Rain on Your Skin, whatever that whatever that Natasha Bedingfield song is it, it was like this haunting rendition of um that song and then it was like the b-roll over the uh city landscape with the words coming out of the mountains the hills did that exact same thing I can't remember if it was the original and or the new beginnings or just the new beginnings but I do remember seeing this for the hills that's cute um if you watched my Real Housewives of Atlanta video, I said that I don't know why these two trailers are being compared to each other because they're like completely different. Um, I didn't realize that I was kind of wrong about that. If you look at the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills trailer, how it differs from Atlanta is, yes, it is a bunch of clips that are put together from the season that don't have a lot to do with each other, but they have enough clips that kind of seemingly go into each other almost or that lead from one one situation to the other where the Beverly Hills trailer almost feels like it is the beginning of it is setting up where we were when the people left off and then it builds with all of the stuff that's going on and then the intense climax hit of like, what's the big drama of the season? And then we kind of see how it all is going to play out. Do you get what I mean? Like, the clips may not be in a chronological story, but if you look at how the groups of clips are set up, it's almost like there's montages set up to give an arc of what the season is going to give. And I don't feel like Real Housewives of Atlanta does that. I feel like Real Housewives of Atlanta kind of just puts highlights of the show together and then it's just like you can't wait for this episode you can't wait for that episode I bet you can't wait to see when this happens or that happens or this happens and it's really like a teaser like it's really like a like it's true definition tease right whereas the Beverly Hills trailer kind of gives you like the intro to the narrative of what we're gonna get for this season do you get what I mean and I like that um we can see that it's going to start off. We're getting along. Everybody's cool. Everybody's fine. You know, we're kicking it. We we see Cherie Zampino, Will Smith's ex-wife, come in. Which, by the way, I know that we're probably not going to get any of this on the actual season. But I hope that at least at the reunion, we get some sort of reaction from Cherie about the Oscars. I know that it's going to be long over, long don't, long gone or whatever. Or at least in the promo. When they bring, like when they start doing the press and having Cherie doing the interviews with the Us Weeklies and the whoever, da, 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 I hope they ask her about it. And I also hope that when they have her on Watch What Happens Live, Andy asks her about it. I don't even have to hope that. I know he's going to ask her about it because I know Andy. He's a messy queen. So he's going to throw in a Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith question all day long. I just hope that nobody tries to pin 
Jada and Sheree against each other like they don't like each other because we all saw the first episode, the very first episode of Real Table Talk. That was Jada and Sheree sitting down and talking about how they used to not get along for real and them hashing out their issues and coming back together and really, you know, making the shit shake. You know what I'm saying? So that storyline is dead. I really don't want her storyline on the show to have anything to do with Will Smith because they haven't been together for over 20 years. Their son together, Trey, is grown as hell. So there's no reason for them to be talking about Will Smith unless they're going to go back retroactively in the way that Garcelle did when she was talking about how she sent the email about her ex-husband to all of his co- uh, to all, 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 all of his co-workers and colleagues. Unless they're going to go back and like really dive into her story and just talk about how they broke up or whatever, blah, blah, blah. That's fine just to give context to her story and who she is. But I hope that that's not like like a plot point in her story because it just seems so far removed what i want to see is if she's still cool with any of the hollywood exes like are we gonna see nicole murphy are we gonna see andrea kelly are we gonna see jessica canseco was that the wife's name or was that the daughter's name was it jessica i think the daughter's name might have been josie anyway like, are we going to see any of the Hollywood exes? Like, are you still friends with those girls? Because a couple years ago, I think this might have been 2020, maybe? Y'all did, like, a reunion with each other. Like, where y'all all got together and did a special about the show. I thought we were going to get a reboot. Because, like, it was so random. Like, why are we doing this Hollywood exes special out of nowhere? <laughs> like... Like it, like, it wasn't even like a new franchise was coming on. But anyway, so, so I'm excited to see Cherie. When Garcelle brought her on last season, I was like, I hope we get to see more of her. Because I, Garcelle was clearly more comfortable around her group of Black girlfriends at the time than she was around these women. And so I was hoping that we got to see more of them. I was hoping that she did bring Cherie on as a friend of last season. I think I might've said that in a video. Don't quote me on that, I'm not for sure, but I know I definitely thought about it. Cause I was like, I wanna see more of her. Like, I wanna see what she's doing. Are we gonna get a whoop ass party? Like, and no, I did not say whoop ass. I said whoop ash which is her body butter company. Cherie has a bo Cherie ha has a company that sells body butter called Whoop Ash. And she been selling this thing for years. I think she took it off the shelves and then redid it and remarketed it and repackaged it or whatever. And she brought it back. But Whoop Ash is in effect. If you look at Jada Pinkett Smith's Instagram, sometimes you'll see her using it. But are we going to get a Whoop Ash party? Like... Are we going to see new products? Like, is this going to expand into lip balm? Like, what are we doing? What's Sheree, like, 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 what, what's Sheree been up to? Can't wait to see that. Diana Jenkins, she does look like Bridget Bardot. She does. She gives me Bridget Bardot. She almost kind of gives me like a Jane Mansfield type of vibe a little bit. But she gives me like this really old Hollywood Zsa, Zsa Gabor type. Like, she gives Gabor the house down. She's beautiful. I just hope that she doesn't lean too far. Like, I hope she's not one of those girls who have been watching the show from season one, thinks she finna come in and know all the people based on the edited version of the show and then try to slide right in when she don't know shit. Because while I enjoyed her moment when she was like, you want a new villain? Here I am. Like, it, it was, it was a moment. Cause it was like, cause especially after hearing Sutton say, you're a soulless person, girl. What did Diana do? Like for her to say you're a soulless person, girl. Sutton must've been hot boots. Speaking of Sutton, are we going to see her shooting for Brian Atwood? Cause I know I mentioned this in a video or somewhere this might have been on FaceTime. I can't remember. But I was talking about to somebody, it may have been you all, about how Sutton would, did this um, high fashion shoot for Brian Atwood shoes. And like that was a major shoe company. And she was giving like Twiggy the house. Like she was giving Maud. She was giving all of that. Like it was beautiful. She looked amazing. She was super skinny, which we need to talk about Sutton and her choice of shape when it comes to her clothing. She does a lot of these A-line dresses that don't show off her shape. And if you look at her Brian Atwood collection, um, 
shoot i don't think she has a collection with brian atwood but i think it's a um she was the model for his uh for his campaign quick correction here not only was sutton strack the model for the brian atwood collection she also got her own shoe in several different colors and styles so if you go back and look at the shoes that she was wearing in the photos that was the sutton sling bag just a quick clarification she looks really fucking skinny not like in a bad way but she looks amazing like her body is incredible um we just don't see it enough. So I hope we get to see Sutton doing more fashion stuff. Because if you look at the first short on this channel, the first short that I did on this channel is me reacting to Sutton walking the runway for Dolce & Gabbana. Sickening. Sickening boots. Like, I want to see Sutton doing fashion. What is going on? Like, what's, what's, what's going on with the store? What's going on with Sutton's store? Are we going to see Sutton's kids? How old are Sutton's kids that we're not allowed to see them film? Because that was the reason why she didn't have a um, diamond the first season that she came on was because we couldn't film with her children. And so they felt like they weren't getting a full aspect of her life. And then they realized, like most of the housewives that come on this show, we don't get to see a lot of the, well, not most of the housewives, but a lot of the housewives that come on this franchise not just Beverly Hills, but I'm saying in general, we don't get to see a lot of their children. So I didn't understand from, 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 from the beginning why Sutton didn't have a diamond unless she just didn't deliver enough in her first season to really take her over that tax bracket into diamond holder status, right? Second season, she gave it up. I give it up to Sutton. She really gave it up. Um, I hope that she has sufficiently learned from the I don't see color thing and we get a whole new Sutton. Um, yeah, she, I, I'm excited to see Sutton back. I, I, I'm excited to see how her and Cherie kind of fit together because, you know, um, Sutton and Garcelle are good girlfriends and Garcelle and Cherie are good girlfriends. So I want to see how that dynamic is going to come in together. Are they going to be like a new dynamic trio? Are they going to be like the new three musketeers? Um... Do you think that Garcelle and Sutton are building a new Fox Force 5 with the new girls? Because I would love to see Garcelle, Sutton, Crystal Kung Minkoff, Diana Jenkins, and Cherie come together as a group of girls to come up against, not necessarily directly come up against, but if it turns into that to where like one of the girls are like, like one of the Fox News five are going after one of the new girls. Like I want the other girls to rally around him, but like, hold on, da 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 da. Like, like almost give us a talls versus smalls. Don't give us the aunties versus the nieces. Cause that shit was whack and it made no sense. It literally made no sense. The aunties versus the nieces didn't make no sense. It had nothing to do with their ages. It had everything to do with their behavior. But girls who were giving very auntie behavior were thotting it out just so they can being the nieces i was like girl like is a requirement for you to be a niece is for you to be a resident of thotlandia like what is going on here it was just weird but the talls versus the smalls that that was a competition that i love to see that was a uh that was a group right that was a west side story group rivalry that i want to see um so i hope we get that like, you know, Fox News 5 versus the CNN crew or something like that. Like, I, I don't know. I, I just really want to see it. Uh, Crystal Kung Minkoff, we didn't see a lot of you in this trailer, and that bothers me. It bothers me that we didn't see a lot of you in this trailer. I don't know what you got going on. I don't know what you're doing. I see you're talking more about your food issues this season. I'm glad to see it. Um... I can't wait to learn more about you. That's really just about it on that. Um, I'm glad to see you're back. Uh, who else? Renna, up to her same old bullshit. Not much to say there. Um, she's dealing with the death of Lois. Rest in peace. My, my condolences to her and, and her family on that. But I hope that she doesn't use the death of her mother as an excuse to be the worst she's ever been on this show. 
because I genuinely believe that Rena is going to use the death of Lois as a reason to lash out and a reason to be messier than she's ever been and be more engaged, as she says, than she's ever been on this show. And I feel like she's going to use some of the viciousness in which she launches into Kathy with. I feel like she's going to use Lois's death as a part of that. And I'm not with it. I'm not with it. I don't like it. I don't think it's cool. I just don't. Mm -mm. Nope. I don't like it. Speaking of Kathy, Kathy and Kyle. I'm just going to do them as a package because Kathy is a friend. And really all that I see of Kathy has to do with Kyle. Um, I don't know what you said about Kyle. To have her literally sitting there in tears. And then Renna sitting there just eating you alive like she went after you the way you held it together with kyle where you just said her name like you were a mafia boss that was waiting for your flunky to come in and shoot her in the back of the head with a silencer i really hope you have that energy with renna because at the end of the day Kyle, I don't think Kyle is really coming to attack you. This is just my personal opinion. I would really hope that y'all did not spend 10 years fell out with each other for you to come on this show and for her to just turn on you like that. I don't, I really hope that it's not that, especially because y'all are sisters in real life. I really hope that that's not the case. I, I hope that Kyle is just genuinely hurt by something that you did and Renna is just doing what she does and latches onto it. And makes it her storyline because she ain't got nothing else going on. I really hope that that's the case. Because I want to see Kathy Hilton get Rena ass in line. I think if anybody is going to sock that woman in her mouth verbally and get her together, I think it can be Kathy Hilton. I'm just saying, I think that she's going to be the one to come in and she's playing up this hunky-dory, nice girl. Oh, I'm just here. I don't know how to plug in a fan shit. But I feel like once Kathy snaps, Kathy is going to snap. So I can't wait to see Aspen to see how that goes. Because everybody's talking about when they go to Aspen, all hell breaks loose. So I want to see how that happens. Um... Kyle, we really didn't see that much from you either. I don't know what you got going on in the uh, season. I, I don't know what you got going on besides this beef with Kathy and the stuff going on with the girls. Dorit, we didn't see much of you except for the robbery. I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad that the kids are okay. Are you still living in that house? I don't, I don't know if I could live in a house where somebody got robbed. But then of the same token, it's like, how many times are you going to move? Because people get robbed all over the place. It's not like just because you move, you're, you're like all of a sudden, like, safe. Unless you literally move on Fort Knox, I guess. Like, I don't know. But um, I don't, like, I'm just worried about Dorit because I feel like we're not going to get a fully checked in Dorit this season or we're going to get a fully unhinged Dorit this season. One of the two things is going to happen. Either she's going to be so withdrawn and so drawn back because she's going to be internalizing everything that happened with the robbery and she may be like, well, damn, if I wasn't so open and vocal and present on this show with, 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 with the fashions and the looks and the clothes and the jewelry, I feel like she may take that into consideration and snatch her fabulosity back from the show and kind of be subdued. That or she's going to be completely unhinged because she's traumatized. So the results of her being robbed are going to be the most engaged Dorit we've ever seen. One of the two. We'll see what happens. Um, Garcelle, RIP the real. I know that was your, you know, that was your dream job to be a talk show host. I'm sure you're going to get another one. Um... I want to know what's going on with the movie that you were selling last season um, that that you were producing. Did you find a director? Did you find all of that stuff? Was the movie that you played in where you were playing the cop about the cyberbullying? Was that um, was that um, the movie that 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 you were supposed to be producing last season? Because I want to know what happened to that project. Um, she sat down with the director and this, that, and the third, blah, 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 blah. What happened to that film? 
what's going on with with your production company are we gonna see you developing uh scripts and shows and and ideas because you did get that first look deal with NBC Universal. Are we going to see you explain that a little bit more? Because I don't think we're going to break the fourth wall enough for her to say, well, everybody gets a first look deal when they come on to The Real Housewives, but my production company, you know what I'm saying? Like, I hope that she explains it in a way to where we understand, like, her and her production company specifically got the first look deal outside of the first look deal that they get as just cast members on the show, right? Um, who else is on this show? Who else is on this show? We didn't see a lot of Crystal. We didn't see that much of Sutton. Erica, go to hell. Erica, go to hell, girl. This is the Erica that I thought that we were going to get last season. This is the Erica that I've been waiting on. The Erica that doesn't give a fuck about nobody but her. This is the Erica that she's been trying to hide all last season. And I knew it. I knew it. Those those mascara tears, that bunch of bullshit. She's cried more on the last season of Beverly Hills than she has her entire life. She's playing victim, doing all that. I knew this is what she was hiding. She literally had the nerve to say you're on the side of the victims because you think that's cool. So, bitch, having a morality complex, having a moral standard is wrong. Having a moral complex is jumping on a bandwagon now. Agreeing that victims should not have been defrauded out of money is jumping on a bandwagon now and it's so funny that she's saying that in a way that is making it seem like her friends aren't being supportive of her or like her friends are turning her back on her and then as soon as we get ready to start this season you're getting named as imperative in all of this money laundering and thievery of of settlement money you're getting roped right back into it so what you mad for? Like, what you mad for? Like, at the end of the day, Erica needs to have some humility. Because it's going to come out regardless. And the way that you're acting, you're skewing the court of public opinion negatively. You're skewing, you're skewing the court of public opinion right out of your favor. If you think that shit like this is going to, if you think your behavior is going to encourage the, the American public to continue to support you, I can't wait to see what happens with your case. Like at this point, I want to see your lawyers. I want to see you give up the earrings. I want to see you hiding jewelry. I want to see Erica Jane at the motherfucking, um, safety deposit box at her bank going stashing away funds that eventually come out in the headlines like i want to see erica go and put those earrings in her safety deposit box and then later on in the season i i, I, I want to see dorit or somebody reading the headline about um the earrings and her needing to give up the million dollar earrings and this that and the third and then them confronting her about bitch why don't you just give up the earrings like girl give up the earrings Give them the earrings, damn it. Give them all the jewelry, bitch. You, you out here working. You make damn near a million dollars a season, if not more than that. I'm sure you make more than a million dollars a season with, <clears throat> with your initial salary, the money that you get from the reunion, bonuses and all of that type of shit. I'm sure you get more than a million dollars just from the show alone on top of the endorsements with Savage X, Fenty, your shoe line with Shoe Dazzle, your makeup collaboration with ColourPop, like all of that stuff. I'm sure that you took advantage of the fact that your husband is one of the greatest lawyers in LA and made sure that you were getting back end and residual income off of all of those deals. I'm sure you were, right? I'm sure, who is financing Pretty Mess Hair? Like, I wanna see how, because Erica was acting like she was going back to broke when she left Tom. Erica was acting like she was literally going back to broke when she left Tom. And now all of a sudden she's starting this super expensive hair extension company and da-da-da-da-da. Like, it's just, I just wanna see 
what she gonna do from here. Cause clearly it's not gonna be music. And this is what I mean when I say that I hate when these girls get on reality shows and then all of a sudden start thinking they can be Britney Spears and shit. Mind you, yes, Erica was working on Erica Jane way before she got on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. But what happened to Erica Jane? If your true passion was being a performer, why don't we get an Erica Jane cabaret show? Why don't we get an Erica Jane album? Why don't we get like where like why are you not funding your passion? Why are we not seeing a Candace storyline? Why are we not even seeing a Luann storyline from you of where you're reinventing the way that you do music because you don't have the budget that you used to have? to spend millions and millions of dollars on Erica Jane and spend $40,000 a month on glam. Where is Mikey Menden? Are we going to see Mikey this season? Where's Mikey Menden? Because we see he's not working with the Pussycat Dolls. So, where's Mikey? Because that was supposed to be your best friend. That was supposed to be your dude. That was supposed to be homie, home skillet biscuit. That was supposed to be the ride or die, right? A spoon clone. So, I, I just want to see the reality of Erica's life and not her curating what she wants us to see to skew our opinions of her. I just want to see what it is, right? What is Erica giving? That's all. Um, I think that's it. There's like eight girls on this show. We, we, we've got eight housewives and one friend. Eight housewives and two friends. Ten girls. God damn. I feel like I'm missing people. Who am I missing? Anyway, I'll talk about it in the comments. I don't know, because I can't think of anybody else right now. I talked about Garcelle. I talked about Sutton. I talked about Kyle. I talked about Dorit. I talked about Renna. I talked about Crystal. I talked about Diana. I talked about Cherie. I talked about Erica. I think I got everybody. Cool. So with that being said, I liked this trailer better than the Real Housewives of Atlanta trailer. Not that I'm comparing them, but since everybody is doing that on the internet, I'll just jump into the pot and offer my um, synopsis. I liked this trailer better because visually it offered me more, right? Visually, it just offered me more. It gave me a lot more than the Real Housewives of Atlanta trailer. I feel like with Beverly Hills, even though each clip isn't conjoined into the other one to thread a specific narrative, I feel like the way that they make the, the uh, trailer for Beverly Hills is like there's groups of shots. There's like groups of montages that are put together to make this trailer. And each group of shots is showing a specific part in the season that leads the whole story to go on, right? So it's like a bunch of random clips that when you put them all together, tell the story of the season or at least the first half of the season. You remember me asking why was the Real Housewives of Atlanta trailer so short? It was shorter by like 30 seconds. Because I think the Real Housewives of Atlanta trailer is like two minutes and 47 seconds. And I think that the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is like almost 30, um, three minutes and 30 seconds. If not longer than that, like, it, like yeah, it was a significantly longer trailer. Now, mind you, this may be because they're they're doing a beginning of the season trailer and a mid-season trailer, but it don't seem like y'all got a lot going on in the beginning of the season, to be perfectly honest. If Kenya pretending to put her hand in Marlo's face like like she gonna fight is, is the most dramatic, drama-filled shit that we getting out of out of the Real Housewives of Atlanta, then I'm worried about the first half, to be perfectly honest. Because Drew Sedora is not going to carry this show. I already know that. And as far as Beverly Hills goes, Erica, I want this to be your last season, girl. I'm over it. I really ain't got nothing left for you. I have nothing left for you. I think you have alienated the core fan base that you built on this show. Because I think when you came onto this show, you were able to capture everybody's attention. You were able to cap capture anybody's attention. Straight, straight, queer, black, white, anybody. Everybody loved Erica Jane at first. And then as the seasons have gone on, people you've turned people off with your personality. You've gained fans, lost fans, gained fans, lost fans. But with this, you're a morally corrupt individual. 
you are a morally corrupt individual. At this point, it doesn't matter to me. And I think I've said this before. It doesn't matter to me how guilty or innocent or how um, involved you are in this because at the end of the day, you're involved regardless of what you knew, what you didn't know, whatever the case may be. At first, it went from you didn't know shit to now you may have been right up there with Jen Shaw. So... We'll see how this plays out. Because it literally went from, I didn't know anything. I was just the wife at home. She couldn't have known. She didn't work for Girardi Keese. To now they're saying, oh, she's one of the main figureheads. And she knew everything. Right? So... It's time for you to go. It's time for Renna to go. Renna ain't gonna give us nothing. She's not gonna give us shit. She ain't gave us nothing. She been ain't gave us nothing. We ain't seen the daughters. We ain't seen Harry Hamlin, which is probably all we're gonna see. We're gonna see the girls basically reacting to Lois's passing. Harry Hamlin is gonna walk by with some bolognese and it's gonna be it. I just don't... I ain't got nothing else for Lisa Renna on this show. There's nothing else that she can bring that is gonna excite me her being messy, petty. Like, here's the thing. All the other girls on this show do the exact same thing that Renna does. We just don't hate them for it because Renna takes it all the way too far. Renna goes all the way left with, with her pot stirring, with, 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 with her digging, with, with her accusation, with her manipulating the storyline. Everybody does that in their own way. But Renna just takes it absolutely too far. She's the one that's carrying the flag and is like, yes, I'm with the bullshit. Like, sit down. We don't need any of it. We don't need any of it. It's too much. It's too much. Renna is too much. And it's time for her to go because you're doing too much and you're not bringing anything. And it's annoying. I'm tired of seeing this same smirk face when you know you done got the shit started, when you know you done brought the pot to a boil and now you sitting over there just relishing in your... Girl, stop. Go. Go somewhere. Go somewhere. I'm tired of her. Dorit, milk this storyline and you can go too. Because I don't... I don't want to see you create another dress line that we never hear about. I don't want to see you create another swimsuit line that we don't ever hear about. Speaking of clothing lines that we don't ever hear about, where is Kyle and Shahidi? Because it seems like on Beverly Hills, we're reverting back to this thing on Real Housewives where the girls create businesses or they create these things that we don't ever see unless we're on camera. Like, we don't ever see it unless it's on the show. Like, mind you, I don't follow most of the Real Housewives. I follow a lot of them on Twitter. I don't follow damn near any of them on Instagram unless I've had a previous experience with them before they came on the show, like with Candy and Garcelle. I knew exactly who they were before they ever came on the show, so my connection with them is not Real Housewives, right? Um, I don't know what's going on on their Instagram, but the times that I have just, you know, casually just scrolled over to their Instagram, I haven't seen anything about Beverly Beach. I haven't seen anything about the dress line. I haven't, seen, like, I don't see anything with these women's businesses really happening. Like, even with Erica, like, I don't, like, are you not promoting the shoe line anymore? Are you not promoting the 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 color pop makeup collaboration? Are you not doing another one? Did it not sell well? Like what's going on? Because it seems like we 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 we, we be seeing these one off collaborations that that you see for the season, and then we don't ever see it again. Like I think we may have seen Kyle wear her clothing line last season, but we don't ever see like what's going on with that. And it's crazy how. Kyle closed her store because of, uh, you know, the area and the location and the rent and the da 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 da. But Sutton opened a store when she came in, so that makes me wonder. Kyle, you closed a store and then opened a clothing line. I don't know. There's a lot of little questions that I have for this season, but overarching, there's not much that I'm excited to see other than what the hell is going on with Kathy. And I want to see Garcelle and Cherie and Sutton. That's about it.
like I, the like the trailer was more exciting but then when i sit here and i break it down and i think it through there's not much that i'm really excited about it was just a good looking trailer well, all right then. May 11th is the date. Um, they're coming out May 11th. I believe Real, Real, Real Housewives of Atlanta is coming on May 1st. If that's not correct, then they're the opposite of each other. Um, so let me know what you're excited about. And I'm going to go ahead and close because that's pretty much it. I think I got everything and, and said everything that I was looking forward to when it comes to, to, to the season. I talked about all the girls in the trailer. Um, I gave a slight comparison to, to, to the Real Housewives of Atlanta trailer. The cast photo. Hold the fuck. Let's talk about this cast photo. This is this is a good cast photo. I love this silver and metallic. But who is editing these photos it seems like garcelle is heavily heavily edited um all the girls are always heavily edited but it looks like they still look like themselves it looks like they literally made garcelle's head smaller on her body like i don't know they all look amazing but this cast i, I don't know i don't know i you know me. I want to get back to season 12 of Real Housewives of Atlanta and, and season four of, or season four, season five of Real Housewives of Potomac. I want those cast photos back where we get full-blown sets and we get background and we get that dimensions and color schemes, which by the way, I saw um, a behind the scenes. I think it was Sheree's, um behind the scenes, I think it was her TikTok or something where she was getting ready to film her cast photos for The Real Housewives of Atlanta. I always thought, like I wanted to believe that all the girls were sitting in the same frame when they did the group shot. But for some reason, those pictures always look like they just Photoshop all those girls in the same frame. Like for some reason, it never really looked like they were all sitting together unless you go back like like certain ones. Like the season 12 one, when they're sitting in the Haunted Mansion, that looked like they were all sitting together. The one where it's like they're in those pastel looks and it's like the peachy background and it looks like they're all sitting in chairs. I think Nene has on that blue strapless dress and she's in that nasty pose. And Candy has on like the pinky peach dress and Cynthia has on the yellow dress. That one. That one looks like they were all sitting together. But a lot of them look like they're just composited together. And I'm not just talking about Atlanta. I'm talking about across the board. They all look like they're just photoshopped together. But when I looked at her TikTok, you see a slight clip of you see her and Kenya or her and Marlo on set. And it's like they're all like by the chairs and stuff getting ready to like primp and fix and get ready to pose. And I was like, they really do this together. Yay! I love that. I fucking love that. I love that they shoot the cast photos together. I want to see that. I would love to see a behind the scenes, like, like an official Bravo TV behind the scenes video of the women shooting the cast photos. I think that would just be a fun video to see. Um, Especially because I would love to see what type of tension is going on in that photo because it, it makes me wonder when they shoot the cast photo. Do do they do it towards the end of taping? Do it do do they do it towards the beginning? Which I would imagine they do it towards the towards the end of taping because they take the entire filming season to decide who's going to be a housewife and who's not. So they don't decide that until the end. So I would imagine that they wouldn't shoot the cast photos until the end if they're putting all of the girls in the same shot and shooting them together. So anyway, that's that. Housewives is coming. Um, yeah, I'm excited. So drop down in your comments. Let let me know what y'all are feeling about the trailers. Let me know what y'all are feeling about uh, feeling about the cast photos. If you like the video, like the video, share, subscribe, do all of the YouTuber things, do everything that your favorite content creators tell you to do. Do all of the thank that the thank the thank the things. I love every single one of you from the bottom of my green heart emoji. And yeah. That's about it. I'll holla at y'all later. Thanks for returning. Thanks for visiting. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace. Goodbye. Yeah. 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 Yeah.